And then in our next video about enthalpy, and of course that's part of thermochemistry, we're going to talk about the difference between a physical and a chemical change. So first, the physical change. A physical change is where chemically the product doesn't change at all, or the reactant, I should say, doesn't change at all. For example, let's say we start with ice and we add some heat to it, the ice will then turn into water. That's a physical change because you have water molecules in a lattice structure or solid structure and now we have water molecules in a liquid environment but basically there was no chemical change. You had H2O here, you had H2O there, here's H2O solid and there's H2O liquid. So that's what we call a physical change. Nevertheless, heat has been exchanged. How? Well, in order for ice to turn into water, you have to infuse heat, you have to add heat because ice will not normally turn into water unless you add heat to the process. So when you add heat to the process, you increase the enthalpy of the reactants and then the result of it, the products will have a higher energy state than what you started with. So this is therefore called an endothermic reaction the enthalpy of the products are greater than the enthalpy of the reactants. It can only happen if you add heat to the process here. Typically ice will start at zero degrees centigrade before it starts melting and this whole process needs to be done at one atmosphere when we want to do the justice to the calculation. So here's the equation. Start with H2O solid, add energy to it, and then we react in a way because we're not really changing the chemical and now it turns into water that's in a liquid state. How much energy has been absorbed to make that happen? Well, to calculate that, that would be the change in enthalpy, and that would be 80 calories per gram. This is, of course, called the latent heat of fusion. That's the amount of heat you have to add to ice for ice to melt uh, into liquid. A calorie is 4.186 joules, so converting that to joules, and then, of course, we have to then convert that to grams per mole because really when we talk about the change in enthalpy we talk about how many joules per mole of the substance we need to change it so here with a calculator let's find out how much that is so we have 80 times 4.186 times 18.016 that's the number of grams per mole for water and when we do all that we get 6033 joules per mole 6033 joules per mole and that would be the change in enthalpy to take ice and turn it into water of course the water is still going to be at zero degrees centigrade and of course if we then keep heating adding heat to what to the water the water's temperature will go up and again the water will then get into higher and higher en energy state or more and more enthalpy okay so that's the example of a physical change now let's go to a chemical change in this case we're going to look at the combustion of methane combustion means that we're going to add some oxygen, so some carbonaceous material, it's going to combust and then we typically end up with carbon dioxide and water as the end product. That's usually the result of a combustion reaction. So starting out with methane, CH4, in a gas form, and then we add oxygen, oxygen to that. Typically to get it going, you need kind of like a flame or something like that. Get it going, once you get going, it produces a lot of energy, so then it goes off on its own. Normally when you put methane and oxygen together, it somehow doesn't start on its own. You need to give it a little push in the back, just maybe a little match, a little flame, something to get it going. Once it gets going, lots of energy produced, and then the reaction just continues. Okay, the end result is that we end up with carbon dioxide gas and some water. Now, let's say that we end up with water in the liquid state. Of course, energy is given off. How much energy? Well, since it's an exothermic reaction, because the energy of the product is lower than the energy of the reactants, so the energy of the substance goes down, that energy is given off to the environment, it's therefore an exothermic reaction, the enthalpy of the products is less than the enthalpy of the reactants, how much less? 890.4 kilojoules in this particular reaction, if this was a molar equation, which means one mole of methane plus two moles of oxygen gas will give us one mole of carbon dioxide gas and two moles of liquid water, and that's the amount of energy that will be freed. Now typically when we have a reaction like that, the products are at pretty high temperatures and the water vapor is usually a vapor, not a liquid. So we produce carbon dioxide gas and typically water vapor, which is in a vapor state. Now since a vapor state of water is a higher energy level than the liquid state of water, the energy produced is typically less than that. 
How much less? Well, take a look at it here. So we start with methane gas, one mole, two moles of oxygen gas, reacts, it gives us one mole of carbon dioxide gas, and two moles of water vapor, gaseous format, and energy released. In this case, only 802.4 kilojoules is released in that particular reaction because it ends up with water in the gas state. Now, however, to get the true number, the true number for the change in enthalpy, if we calculate it, the reaction must be done at one atmosphere and at 25 degrees centigrade, which means that in the end, we start off with the products at 25 degrees centigrade and we want the reactants to be at 25 degrees centigrade as well. And of course, when water vapor gets cooled down to 25 degrees centigrade, it will no longer be in gas state, it will now be in the water state. And so we can then say that to go with two moles of hydrogen gas and then convert it to two moles of hydrogen liquid, at 25 degrees centigrade, which we didn't specify here, but that must be the case. Energy will then be released, how much? 88 joule, kilojoules. If you add the 88 kilojoules to the 802.4 kilojoules, you end up with 890.4 kilojoules. So in the end, you get this as the total amount of heat generated through that reaction, if in the end, the reactants then end up at the 25 degree centigrade state, so that the water gas actually becomes a water liquid. And so hopefully that helps you understand the differences between a physical change and a chemical change and then how heat is being produced or heat is being absorbed and how we measure that in terms of so much per mole in the case of the physical change or in this case we want this to be a molar equation so it's not necessarily per mole but it means that every number here one mole of methane two moles of oxygen one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water vapor that at least you recognize that the, the particular products and the particular, I mean reactants of particular products are in a molar equation and then the value for the enthalpy change is correct.